Welcome to Catherine B. Roy Show. I'm your host, Catherine B. Roy, and I am so honored to have Sabrina Rumbeck here with me. She is a cardio... You see, the first word I have to read from your bio. <laughs> cardio thoracic. You see, surgery PA <laughs> with more than 10 years of experience in public health and neuroscience. Before I continue reading her bio, I have to say that I am absolutely amazed with this girl. Like, her energy is blowing up every room she shows up so be prepared for this interview after overcoming burnout and feeling stuck in a career that drained her she became an international peak performance speaker empowering ambitious professionals to find their voice reconnect with their passion and become influential in their fields without feeling overwhelmed underappreciated or undervalued that's why people call her the queen of performance and productivity. I told you she's brilliant. She hosts the powerful and passionate Health Health Professionals podcast, whom has been featured on Kevin MD, Authority Magazine, and numerous stages such as Fox 5, CBS 13, Screw the Naysayers podcast, and Live on Purpose Radio. She is also an author of an upcoming book, Asian Woman Who Boss Up. Welcome, Serena. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for listening in. And it's amazing for you to spend the time with us. I am so happy to, to see you here. And for our listeners and watchers, uh, tell us a little bit more about your story. Um, how we can actually appear to be so confident and calm? And how you came through your all life experiences to that point? This is a, such a great question, and many of us don't ever get it right, and then we feel like, oh, I should be f more further along by now, right? And that's the most common question that my clients come to me, despite how much they already are a leader in healthcare, lawyers, or their business. And at the end of the day, I never learned that when I was younger either. I remember even when I was younger as a high schooler, I was walking into my classroom, chatting with my friends for AP statistics class and barely warmed to see my teacher is passing back this, the, a quiz from the week before. So clearly I am shut up and my hands getting sweating, like my heart is pounding, like, oh, what is it? So when I saw the number inside that big round red circle, I'm like, holy moly, this girl start crying, not pretty, and people start staring at me, right? And then guess what the score really was, Tell me. right? So it's, what's the 82? So for some people, it's like, what the heck is oh, a B minus seriously? big deal? <laughs> and, but the problem is a lot of us, and same as me at the moment, I never learned self-empathy. We always talk about empathy as giving empathy and never really think about receiving and allowing ourselves to give ourselves the empathy. Mm -hmm. So that becomes such a judgmental thing. And even before that, I grew up as the only child, the only girl in all the family of boys. And I felt like I have to compete with them. Mm -hmm. In the Asian culture, especially, people would see girls as, yeah, you study, you got a good job, but, you, you know, get married, have kids. That's, <laughs> that's <know>. what <laughs> life is, what your parents want for you. Mm -hmm. I think, why should the boys be in all these major lead and go out to have uh, additional education and do all their stuff, whether they're in business or, or uh, holding a high leadership position. Why can't I be that way? Why can't we be defined who we are as a self? So that dry, when I moved all the way from China to the US, I had to really relearn the English language. Um, I used to, when I was seeing my teenagers, Weekends are not just, oh, yeah, having fun, discover yourself. But for me, it was selling pots and pans on flea markets, trying to like mm. earn a little extra box. And that momentum really pushed me to get two master degrees and a medical license and finally work myself directly to one of the best heart center hospital in the whole mm -hmm. country and even in the world where we have international patients mm -hmm. coming to us. Mm -hmm. And for most people, they're like, you made it. 
-hmm. And now I thought, well, shoot, if I made it, I better work at it because it's competitive. And uh -huh. that get into the spread of working more than 80 hours, have multiple surgeries a day. And one month, I was in a hospital 29 days straight. Well, yeah, I went home, I shower, I ate, but I was back mm. every single day. And then I realized mm. I had to take the ownership of what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. I cannot be in a stuck in a moment of complaining the system failed me. I have nobody on the team. I have to do this. Otherwise, who else? I have to take the consultation. Let's just book a let's go. Mm -hmm. And we all get into this competitiveness mm -hmm. with ourselves and with others and feeling like we need to take on those extra burdens. And at the end of the day, we tend to say so many yeses to the things that are not aligning mm -hmm. with our sanity, our energy, and then we're really compromising who we are. So I'll go back to square one. My background in neuroscience and public health, which I studied self-care, self-efficacy, and health literacy, and even using music as a, a stress management tool. And also, of course, learning from all the other neuroscientists, positive psychologists, and uh, performers to see how can we simplify a system? Mm -hmm. Because most people search for bigger system, right? Leadership uh, and self-performance. But it's too many exterior change, not enough a self-driven one. So I truly believe that we don't have a burnout or stress management issue. We have a boundary and leadership issue. We forgot how to lead our own Amen life. Amen to that. And then bring out the best in others. And if we constantly just learning more things, getting degrees, Jesus, I have a lot of letter under my belt. So what? Mm -hmm. Right? That doesn't equal mm -hmm. to that fulfillment satisfaction. That doesn't equal that you're able to tap into your full potential. Mm -hmm. I am amazed with everything you said because I completely agree. We push ourselves to the limits. And at the end, it's just for what? If we don't feel fulfilled, if, we, if this is why I love your energy, this is why I love your mission, because you, you turned your complete like percep perception of everything from being in the hospital every single day to actually stepping up in front of everyone and inspire everyone to find that fulfillment in, in ourselves. And I think that we share the same mission from the different angle. And I, I absolutely love that we met and, and that we can share this. So um, the one thing is being peaceful and, and, and in alignment with ourselves. But if we want to spread this message, we need to be influential and we need to be in the momentum. And I know that you are a, a, a voice uh, behind this uh, um, perspective also. Can you share a little bit about that? How can we be more influential? Yeah, such a great question. I see a, a, a general three parts that break down to six steps. So mm -hmm. number one is that we need to have a clear idea. What's our ideal lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Because the most common question we always being asked when we're younger, and even now when you greet people, what's the first thing? What's your name? What do you do? <laughs> how come the doing part matters so much than who we are as a person <laughs> and how we live and how we show up for others? Mm -hmm. That matters so much more, but we forgot that. So then people start losing their aim in who they are and therefore they get into the round, oh, I'm just really good at doing, so I'm going to keep doing the doing. But how is that doing or wearing that business, busyness as a badge of honor mm -hmm. serve you in the future? So when uh, one of my mentor, Brandon Burchard, he says the outcome is not just ROI, right? It's important to have some specific output that's measurable. But mm -hmm. what else is in there? Future value, mm -hmm. lifestyle, and personal growth, right? Mm -hmm. We know novelties bring in new nuances, energy excitement. So mm -hmm. the very first step is paint a clear picture of how do you want to live? And the second step is now we know it. Now we need to keep up that momentum, that drive. 
Now we have to define how do we want to show up each day and remind ourselves, check in with ourselves, reflection, and who do we actually serve on the other side to keep us accountable, to know that we matter, not just in our own bubble, but in a bigger mm-hmm. circle of family, society, mm-hmm. and world, right? And now we go into the third step. What's that? You know what you want. You know how to build momentum. Now you have to master this, master your psychology. And one of the thing when we talk about positive intelligence is that success is measured by intelligence, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, Your IQ, EQ, big thing, right? People always talking about EQ, but it's still just knowledge-based. It yeah. doesn't mean you use it correctly. Exactly. So, so knowledge all this degree, research, yada, yada experience, plus what else? PQ. So how does that positive quotient got measured? Is you recognize what are the nine type of sabotaging behavior you have Mm -hmm. and not just recognizing, pivoting into the sage, what we call the empowerment part, right? The novelties, the, the innovation part, the curiosity, right? How quickly can you pivot? That matters. If you would just notice what we are not good at, mm-hmm. then we're actually judging ourselves instead of putting ourselves in the positive realm, mm-hmm. right? It's that neurological training that we got out. Mm-hmm. So know what you want, build momentum, then master your psychology. Once you have mastered your psychology, then what? We have to have the right energy and stamina to keep ourselves going. Mm-hmm. And like, Catherine was saying one of her client right before our call for this recording, she was just drained, right? Too many of us are drained Mm -hmm. and they wanted to get to the productivity part before they do all the basic stuff to build themselves for it. I can teach you all the strategies, but you, without the right energy, are you going to do any of it? Mm -hmm. Right. Let's be honest. So once you have learned your natural energy cycle and using different exercise to boost yourself, even within two minutes, you can get there, right? I teach people those two minute exercise, what I call mental vacation, right? Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> you have to allow yourself to do that. Uh-huh. And now once we have the energy, then we can talk about productivity tips, right? How can we truly set boundary and knowing we are living and we are doing the things 80% of the time is in our genius zone, right? Something mm-hmm. you're naturally super good at or you learn, you build up the skill and it's also in your passion zone. Mm-hmm. Because if it's just what you're good at, but you're not really loving it, mm-hmm. then it's a waste of time. And if it's just you're, you're loving it, but it's not going to produce you any result toward your future, then it's a total distraction, right? Then it, when people do it, it's just making excuses of someone told me it sounds good. You should be. But then are you living someone else's life or your own life? Mm -hmm. Right. And then lastly, influence, Mm -hmm. we can talk about, let's not be accidental diminishers, right? There are six Mm -hmm. types of ways that people diminishing other versus being the attractive magnet, knowing what other people's passion zone and efficiency zone, right? Their genius Mm -hmm. zone. And Mm -hmm. so you can delegate appropriately, And so then people are more likely to jump on board when you have new ideas to make something amazing happening, creating that synergy instead of trying just to push that idea out, hoping other people accept you. That is too difficult. I can't wait for people to hear this because you just you just blow my mind. People are always asking me, why personal growth and business growth? Because it doesn't go one without another. You can have know-how. Like, you know, uh, I always had a high IQ, but that didn't help me. Like all my education and everything I did, that didn't help me. Recognizing my own, like, uh, um, boundaries, my own blockages, uh, eliminating that, pivoting that to, to the higher level, just like you just said, and switching from that moment of, you know, doing to, to creating actually is what makes you be the magnet. So people are trying to do the same things other people are trying to do, 
while they actually need to be themselves and open up and and speak like yesterday i spoke to my uh, spiritual guide and i told her i feel like i'm going to start a volcano because i need to te- to say to the world what i truly believe in like the system is completely like not sustainable anymore and she just said my love you are supposed to do that (laughs) you know and this is why i love people like you who come up on the stage who show by their own experience that actually the system that we are living in can be perceived in a different way and as you just described we need to connect with ourselves and and to be our best version and actually to share that with the world and you are doing that like you are one of the people who have the strongest and the most powerful positive energy I have ever experienced. And you are the magnet. And that's why I I want you, you know, in our circles, in in my podcast, on my networks, everywhere, because you just, you just shine. It's, it's who you are. And I'm, I'm very grateful to you for that. Um, Well, let's go back to, to, to something else, like more, more tangible. How can we get, how can we do more with less stress and, and, and how can we resonate with that peaceful energy inside of us in the same time? Yeah, such a great question. One of the major exercises that my client like is that I created this one sheet of burned out bulletproof alignment. Mm-hmm. So I encourage people to reflect on this on a weekly basis. Because you deserve have some meat time, deserve to actually look at your own life, the moment right now to move forward, right? Um, the reason a mastermind I've been doing is to actually look back into your 2020 because we can always find something good in our life. And then we can realize what worked, what didn't work. Who are the people who's supposed to stay in our life? And some people might be eliminating. What are the things we need to continue to build in into our primary genius zone and passion zone? And then everything else needs to be eliminated, delegated, right? And so this one is very simple. What you want to Uh, is to able to sit down, Mm -hmm. identify your three primary value system. Mm -hmm. And how do you want to show up, keep the most valuable for this next week? We Mm -hmm. want to be short. If we create goals too much, too big, people stop doing them because they think, oh, I have to plan so much ahead. So if you plan really short amount of time, then you can measure it. Mm -hmm. Because what we say is action, confidence, then competency, then more action, Mm -hmm. right? You even just that little step forward, it tells our brain immediate reward, I can. And that gives you the confidence to do even more. And the more repetition you do and you start tweeting how well you can proficient that skill or the communication part, then of course you become more competent Mm -hmm. in those skills, right? And that's what we're saying, just three. I know many people care about a lot of things in life Mm -hmm. and you should, but it doesn't mean all of the things that we need to do in life truly gonna bring you somewhere. So if you only pick three, anything else coming in your way is not within the three category, guess what? You can say no. No is a <laughs> false sentence. And that. one of my friends even say no means new opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's something that's more because every no you're saying, you're saying yes to the things that truly matters mm-hmm. and the things that maybe you forgot what your hobbies even mm-hmm. mean to me. Mm-hmm. Right? A lot of entrepreneurs I talk to, they say, well, my business is my hobby. I truly enjoy it. But what we're talking about is removing yourself from the work altogether. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to work to live, not live to work. To work. Exactly. And, and, and we did everything to switch that all around and do it all wrong. <laughs> As a civilization, that's the point. As a civilization, yes. Uh, We're completely reversed. (laughs) 
that's the volcano I was talking about. <laughs> that's completely that's completely true. I I absolutely agree. You know, I I was practicing. I I honestly was practicing saying no, and and now it just became a part of my everyday life. I just have to say no, and. Uh, you know, I have I have people who help me in that uh, on my social media, so it, it doesn't have to be me. But <laughs> anyway, no is there. Now we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to ask you very quick questions, and you have like ten seconds to answer me. Uh, you will hear the ring bell when it's done. Okay, Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Fast wrap around. <laughs> What motivates you every day? Just knowing that this message and this concept that I'm working on is now widely out there, and especially we don't see the problem. We see a lot of actions. We want to get to the result, but most of us don't have that system. And I'm so excited just to share. And it feels that way. We can feel that. <laughs> What's your favorite book? Brandon Burchard is one of my coach, and he wrote the High Performance Habit. So that's one of my book that I always go back to the steps and training. I love Brandon Burchard, by the way. <laughs> and what do you do in your spare time? What's your hobby? Yes, hobby is hiking, traveling, uh, dancing, singing. I have a music degree undergrad, but clearly did nothing with it except just having it and be able to uh, do random stuff with it, you know, <laughs> and then play a little drum here and then bounce around. We didn't have a, a, a dance major. Otherwise, I probably would have just picked that as my art degree. <laughs> beautiful so beautiful i was talking to my son he's four years old and he wants to to learn to play piano and i never did so we agreed that we will go to do that together so mommy is going back to school <laughs> <laughs> tell me what we can expect from your magic in 2021 how people can reach out to you um do you have something special to offer to us and especially tell us a little bit about your upcoming book Yes. Uh, thank you so much for that. So my book called Asian Women Who Boss Up, we have 16 Asian women in diverse background, thought leaders, movie producers, chefs, and coaches, medicine, like me, we all come together. We want to just show the world. We're not just the good obedient girls. We're women who have the power to stand up against against men and against the culture differences. We can be whoever we want to be. It doesn't define us as just a wish Asian woman. So that book's coming. I'm so excited. And you can check out at sabrinarunback.com. And for everyone who's listening in and you wanted to figure out how can you bring yourself back to become a high performer again, and you can book a free peak performance blueprint call with me. And if you indicate you're from Catherine's show, I'll make sure you get on my calendar because I only do three of those a week. And you can go to sabrinarunback.com forward slash blueprint. And I'm very active on LinkedIn, just like Catherine, as well as on Instagram. And my handle is just my phone name, Sabrina Runback. Thank you so much for everyone for listening in today. And thank you for being my guest. It was truly my pleasure. I enjoyed and hope you did too. Much pleasure is all mine. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>